Hey guys, welcome back. Houston Math Prep here. In this video, we're going to begin our discussion on statistical hypothesis testing. This is a process where if we are not able to know information about a particular population parameter and we want to be able to test the validity of a claim about that population parameter, we can go through this process to do that. So let's look at some examples of claims that we might be interested in performing a hypothesis test on. Here's our first one. Let's say that a car dealership announces that the mean time for an oil change is less than 15 minutes. Well, that would be awesome, but how do we know if that claim is accurate? Well, the process of hypothesis testing can help us. Let's say a company advertises that the mean life for its furnaces is more than 18 years. Well, if you're going to invest a whole lot of money replacing a furnace in your home, it would be very nice to know if that claim is going to be accurate. Will you truly get 18 or more years out of that investment? And let's say that you're researching colleges and a particular college publicizes that the proportion of its students who are involved in at least one extracurricular activity is 61%. If that's something that's important to you, you might want to test whether or not that is valid. So let's take a look at the process by which we could test the validity of these claims. Here's the general outline, so let's just walk through these. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take that claim that we're interested in testing and we're going to transform that into what we call a null hypothesis and an alternative hypothesis. We're going to always have a null hypothesis which is based upon the, a statement of equality. The null hypothesis usually, usually describes the status quo. An alternative hypothesis is often going to be based upon the claim, and it is going to be a statement of greater than, less than, or not equal to. We're going to have more videos on exactly how to write those coming soon. Once we have our hypothesis statements, we can draw a picture of our model and shade what we would call rejection regions. So depending on what parameter we're working with, we're either going to be working with a standard normal model or a student T distribution. But either way, we know that those look approximately mound shaped. Now rejection regions are going to be the idea that we are going to draw a distribution based on the null hypothesis. Assuming that the null hypothesis is true, we're going to create a distribution for that. Then, based upon the alternative hypothesis, whether it's greater than, less than, or not equal to, we're going to be looking at probabilities and areas. So again, more on that coming in future videos. Once we have that information down, we'll calculate test statistics. It's either going to be a z-score or a t-score, depending on our distribution. And then we're going to determine, is that test statistic that we found further out into the rejection region. So is it more extreme than the rejection region value that we found? If so, we'll state our conclusion about the claim and the alternative hypothesis. Okay, so I know that that seems a bit nebulous for now. Stay tuned for future videos where we go through each step of this process in detail. Until then, catch you next time.